I'm at a stage with my hair right now where I just don't know what to do. Do I cut it off? Do I dye it? I, I don't know. Hello and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Kaylin and I post videos every single Saturday with a couple sprinkled in between. And I post mainly about eating disorder recovery and also intuitive eating. So if you're interested in either of those two topics, I would love for you to stick around and click that subscription button down below. And you can also turn on the little bell icon if you wanna be notified every single time I upload a new video. And today is going to be another video for my intuitive eating series here on my channel. Today we are going to be discussing the fifth principle of intuitive eating, which is feeling your fullness. Also, if you're curious about the past four principles, I will leave my intuitive eating playlist linked in the description box below. So this principle, like almost every other principle within intuitive eating is all about listening to your body. And when you come from a disordered past or from a past with diets, this can be very challenging because for so long you haven't been in tune with your body and you haven't been listening to it. So today we are going to focus on fullness and also the barriers that can stand in your way when it comes to honoring your fullness and a couple tactics that you can try at home to counteract these barriers. So the first thing that we are going to talk about is distracted eating. It's something that we all do. We turn on Netflix. I like to watch a good YouTube video, especially if you're alone. It's kind of nice to have that sort of company in front of you or some kind of entertainment if you have nobody to speak to. And also, I'm sure if you're a parent, if you're trying to get some food in, most of the time you're distracted. You know, you're running around, maybe packing lunches for school, trying to feed your own kids trying to do a bunch of stuff at the same time while you're eating and that distraction, whether it's family, people, or just a technological distraction such as Netflix or YouTube can really inhibit you from realizing whether you're full or not. And this is particularly important, especially at the beginning of your intuitive eating journey when your body is totally out of whack from the diet world or from your disordered past and you just have a lot of difficulty understanding and listening to your body in general, distracted eating can make it a lot more difficult and a lot harder to understand and to listen. And one of the big issues with this kind of distracted eating is that you're actually missing out on a lot when it comes to your food. So how it tastes, the textures, the smells, all of that good stuff, you're not really absorbing it because you're in another world, whether that's emails for work, whether it's a Netflix show, whatever it may be, your focus isn't exactly on the meal that's in front of you. And the problem of not paying attention to these sensory details is that you might not even realize you're full until you reach the point of being too full that uncomfortable full. Or consequently, you might realize that you're full, but you didn't actually enjoy the meal that you consumed at all because of how distracted you were. And I'm not gonna lie, occasionally, well, a lot of the time, I like to put on a video. I like to watch a YouTube video while I eat, um, especially when it comes to like lunch and I'm not dining with my partner. I just like to put on something for background sounds and everything like that for background noise, if you can say. And I think that if you are coming from a disordered past and you have trouble eating alone or you're still having food anxiety, then perhaps watching somebody eat on camera feels like they're having a meal with you or FaceTiming a friend who's also consuming food or having lunch or whatever it is can be helpful. And I'm not telling you to stop. If you're coming from a disordered past and having somebody there, whether they're not truly there with you or not, helps you get your breakfast, lunch, dinner, and snacks in, then please continue to do this. This advice is not targeted for you. So this is mainly for people who want to take a step into intuitive eating and who are learning about all of the principles and have recovered from most of their demons from their disordered past or who are learning to try to do so. You guys are who I'm talking to. So besides distracted eating, we also want to focus on the environment that we are eating in. We want to have an optimal, environments and this can look drastically different for you for me from person to person what i find optimal is not going to be the same for everybody some of us eat alone or live alone others 
live with family members, but I want you to see each meal as an opportunity to connect, nourish, replenish your body. So we are mainly searching for some kind of environment that is pleasant and calm and relaxed, and most importantly, as free from distraction as possible. And again, this is especially important at the beginning of your intuitive eating journey when you haven't been listening to your body for a long time and you're really trying to gauge when you are full. So how do we set ourselves up for success? You know, how do we have a good environment? How do we become less distracted? Boundaries. Boundaries are so important in relationships, in friendships, for your mental health and also in intuitive eating. You wanna set some boundaries, like I said, especially at the beginning. So a couple examples of boundaries that you can set are no phones at the table, no electronics at the table, that kind of stuff. You can also make sure that you have to sit down for every meal, you know, that you're not standing up, rushing, that you're not sitting in your bed. I know it's tempting and sometimes you just need a snack in bed and that's okay. But for your main meals, I want you to try to focus on perhaps sitting in the same place, sitting at a table, something like that, not standing, not lying down, just sitting at a good old fashioned table, whatever you've got, kitchen nook, dining room table, anything works at this point. And then it's also important to have boundaries when you are creating an environment that feels safe and comfortable for you. So if you are eating with other people, some boundaries that you can set are the following, no diet talk, no commenting on my body, no commenting on my plate. There are more important things in this world to discuss than bodies and dieting. And you also don't owe anybody a dinner invitation. If somebody makes you feel constantly judged or fearful or uncomfortable, you don't have to eat them. And I know that in some circumstances that is a lot easier said than done. You want to try to have the safest, calmest, and most relaxing atmosphere than you can. So perhaps timing your meals differently would be advisable depending on your home situation. And then there are the basics, you know, when you jazz up a meal a little bit more, make it seem more relaxing. So you can light a candle, dim the lights, play some soft music, whatever you gotta do to make yourself nice and relaxed. So distracted eating. It's not good when we're trying to listen to our fullness. Something that's also not good is the clean your plate mentality. So this is the idea that you have to finish everything on your plate regardless of whether or not you are still hungry, whether or not you are satiated. And this goes against intuitive eating just in general. Within intuitive eating, your fullness and your hunger is measured by your body, not by what's on a plate. You can stop whenever. It doesn't matter how much food is left on your plate. You also have unconditional permission to go back for seconds or thirds or however many rounds it takes to satisfy your hunger. And this clean your plate mentality isn't just upheld within households. You know, it's not just a pushy grandmother making you finish what's on your plate. It's also perpetuated by packaged foods, you know, so once you open a package, you feel like you have to eat everything that's in it because it's not resealable. Think a container of yogurt, um, a bag of chips, crackers, whatever it is. Sometimes those prepackaged foods, um, it makes you feel like you have to eat the entire portion when that's not the case. And it can also have the opposite effect as well, where you think that you can only have one of these portions because it's individually wrapped when that's also not the case. And this clean your plate mentality can come from a lot of different places and it's rooted in a lot of different family situations as well. For example, growing up, we were not well off. We weren't middle class, we were borderline poor. And so not consuming what was on our plate was viewed as wasteful. But I know that this situation is not the same for everybody. Some people grew up in a big family, so either you ate then or you didn't eat, you know? Other people could have had pushy parents. Some people could have been told that finishing what was on your plate was a sign of respect. So now let's talk about a couple ways you can break down this barrier of the clean your plate mentality. The first thing that you can do is try to leave a bite or two of food on your plate after a meal, just to leave it on the plate. And the point of this is to break the habit of finishing everything that's on your plate. And when you practice this technique, it allows you to assess your hunger, to take a second and ask yourself whether or not you are full. Am I telling you to always leave food on your plate, to always leave a bite or two? No, 
Absolutely not. I'm trying to ask you to be more in tune with your body, to ask yourself questions, to see whether or not you are truly hungry. Also, if you're still hungry by the time you get to those two bites, please continue eating. Please go grab another portion. But I'm talking about when you get to that final plate and you have two bites left on your plate, just leave them there and see how you feel about it. Assess how you're feeling and also assess your hunger at the same time. Another issue that arises when it comes to feeling your fullness is people who eat extremely quickly. And some people just eat quickly. There's no shame in that. Some people eat very slowly. Some people eat quickly. Everybody is different. But if you find yourself eating so quickly and then by the time you get to the end of your meal, you are extremely full because you didn't realize how full you were getting because of how quickly you were eating, there are a couple tips that you can do as well. Of course, telling you to slow down, I mean, it's, it's not that helpful. You can try if you want, but fast eaters sometimes are just fast eaters. However, if you want to do a fun little experiment at home, if you are a very quick eater, try holding your cutlery in your non-dominant hand. So I'm right-handed, so I would try to use my left hand and obviously it's not as natural, so you're going to be eating a little bit more slowly. And I'm not saying that eating slower is better or eating faster is bad. Right now, we are focusing on ways for you to feel your hunger, on ways for you to understand when your body has hit its point of satiation. The switching of the hands is not a way to eat less. It's not a way of me advising for you to eat less. It's a way for you to slow yourself down so that you're able to assess your hunger throughout a meal. It's a way for you to connect with your body. The next thing I want to talk about is learning to say no. For me, as a people pleaser, as a pushover, this was incredibly hard to grasp and incredibly difficult to put into practice but I've learned and I'm very proud of myself for how far I've come. I'm going to state it here that no or no thank you is a full sentence in many aspects of the world, but today we are going to talk about it through the lens of intuitive eating. At family gatherings or at social gatherings in general, family members or friends or the host of the party tends to offer people more food, offer people seconds, drinks, appetizers, desserts, all that good stuff. And I want you to see the host or the family member in question as somebody who's complying with their role as the homemaker, you know, as the host. They're just letting people know that there's more food if you desire, if you want. If you're hungry, there's more. That you can have seconds, thirds, whatever. They're just letting you know by offering. But I just want to say that you have the right to say no thank you to seconds. No thank you to dessert. And it doesn't matter how many times they ask, you have permission to continue to say no. And you're not saying no because you are following any food rules. We do not follow food rules on this account, okay? We eat everything on this account. If you're interested, check out my what I eat in weeks. We do not restrict. The advice I'm giving you in this video is to help you anchor yourself, is to help you understand when you are full, not to help you restrict in any shape or form. I also understand that some hosts take offense when you say no. A lot of the time it's these older Karen types. They think that you don't enjoy their food. They think that you don't want any. So here are a couple examples of how you can say no repeatedly in a different way. You can say, no thank you. The food is delicious, but I'm too full to have any more. Your dessert looks delicious. I'm too full to have any right now, but I would love the recipe. Even just one more bite of food is going to make me too full, but thank you very much for the offer. I'm working on listening to my body right now, and I think I've had enough to eat. Thank you very much. And I know that these gatherings can be tough, and saying no is hard, but just stand your ground and understand that you're doing what's best for your body. I also want to talk about fullness, because everybody feels fullness in a different way. The most obvious way that people feel fullness is in their stomach. You know, you feel full, you feel satisfied. But for others, people think it in their heads, you know, they're not thinking about food as much, They and the desire to eat has just been diminished. 
and a lot of us actually feel it in our mouths as well. When you continue eating, the food near the end when you're not as hungry doesn't taste as good as it did at the beginning. And everybody, every single person out there needs a different amount of food to feel satisfied. There are so many factors that go into hunger, that go into how much you eat. And something else that you can do during this step of intuitive eating is learning how foods make you feel. There are some foods that are gonna make you feel great and other foods that don't sit really well with you. And like I said, everybody is different and intuitive eating is a journey. And it's a journey for you to make these discoveries because to be completely honest, I didn't even realize that I didn't like certain foods or that I liked certain foods before I dove into my intuitive eating journey. I forced myself to eat some foods because they were healthy and it turns out I didn't even like them. I was also binging on foods that I craved while dieting and I've also come to realize that I don't even like how those foods taste. And as you begin to become accustomed to your own fullness and also to your fullness cues, you'll learn when to stop very naturally. You'll learn where your body is comfortable and satiated and when you get there, it's a wonderful point. But my goodness, does this take practice. Intuitive eating isn't just something that you master. You make mistakes. You make a lot of mistakes and that's okay. I'm not here to preach perfection. Intuitive eating isn't about perfection. I am a year into my intuitive eating journey, one year, and I still overeat sometimes. I eat past my fullness. I get so caught up in this, you know, good birthday cake or this wonderful dessert or delicious slice of pizza that, you know, I eat past fullness. I get distracted. I'm watching a good show. It happens. I don't want you to beat yourself up. That's not the point. Intuitive eating is about having a connection with your body. It's about understanding what it needs, nourishing it. Most of the time these days, I'm able to stop when I am full, when I am satisfied, when I am comfortable. But sometimes I get to that point of discomfort and that's also okay and also part of the journey. This is about healing your relationship with food and your body, not about making yourself feel guilty or shameful. As I say in every single video, there is no room for shame or guilt on your plate, none. You want to provide for your body and not deprive it. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope that you got something out of this video and understood some of the barriers that can possibly stand in your way when it comes to feeling your fullness. If you have any other questions or something you would like me to address, or a video idea that you have, please leave them in the comments down below. I really appreciate it whenever anybody comments. It just puts the biggest, goofiest smile on my face. I just, I feel so honored that you would take the time out of your day to leave me a comment. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and I can't wait to see you in my next video. Thank you guys so much for watching again and have a great day. I'll see you next time.